Oh hi there mas, what's up people, Dr. Wolves is right here and today it is the Tsushiji Fish Market Day. I'm just going to double check now to see if it actually is open. If it's not open we'll probably go to Rapongi or something like that but I'm 100% certain it is open today because it is a Thursday. Now, money is now getting shorter now, shorter by the day. So I'm only taking 10,000 yen with me today. Um, but I am deciding because I actually ha I actually bought three hundred pounds extra UK cash for me if anything did go wrong, something did go wrong. But like I said, spending is all my life in this in on this uh, YouTube channel. But also it is when you go to Tokyo because you want to spend as much as much time as you can getting all the stuff that you want. Um, so I'm just going to double check to see how much £300 could get me in Japanese yen. But the currency right now is around about 47,000 yen. That's actually really good. Um, so yeah, I might try and see if I can get it changed here in the hotel. Or I have to go to Akiba later on to get it changed there. So, anyhow, I'm going to get myself prepared now. I'm going to go off to the, Tsuhi the Tsushiji Fish Market. The one that's well known all over the world. But first, breakfast. Breakfast. So, we're back in Ginza. Pretty much heading straight down here to the Tsushiji Fish Market. So, it's a nice little walk again in Ginza for a little bit. Still more Prada stuff. It's still, it's still ridiculous that this area is just literally all full of extremely expensive items more than anything. Things that I cannot buy. <laughs> now I did, I did also check about um, currency and everything where I can actually change it. There was this plot, there was a spot in Akihabara to get one, um, and pretty much exchange three hundred pounds is around about 40, 40 odd, forty odd thousand yen. I think it was like forty something. Uh, let me double check. 45,900 yen, so that's actually not too bad. That'll keep me going for for the last few days. So I may do that after I finish the, the TCG fish market. But it looks like we're do, going the correct way. We need to go this way. So let's keep moving. So we're getting close to the TCG fish market. Another cherry blossom has been blooming there. So it's pretty much crossed this bridge and then we're literally right there, hopefully. You might be thinking, what on earth am I going to be trying to eat over there? Well, you guys know that. There was that mochi I absolutely freaking adored when I was over there. I did the strawberries and the custard. Mm, that was so nice. I'm going to try and get some more other savoury stuff as well to taste. Try and vlog as much as I can of it. It depends on how freaking busy it is. Already start hearing the buzzing of people knocking about. These show blossoms, they're not fully bloomed but they're just as good. Just as I predicted, bustling like always. God, it's gonna be a, be a pain in the fucking ass to record in here. Holy shit, it's just literally tourist after tourist after tourist. People from all over the Japan. Most people are probably way outside of Tokyo. Mostly it's a lot of them are more Americans and Australians. This place is exactly as it was back in 2017. Busy as fuck. I'd expect it to be a little bit quieter now, but no, it stayed busy even throughout the years. Crazy. 
okay the delectable mochis have been picked and collected but this place is still freaking bustling on there's no tomorrow it's literally you can't even move like stop to think on what to get so it's literally stop and go stop and go stop and go and literally nobody stops it's literally move forward move forward if you want something step to the side but that's just pretty much all it is you can't stop and think at least I can try and get some pictures as I go along, not vlogging. So at least, like I said, you get yourself the picture vlog at the end of the whole entire trip, so at least you guys get to see what I saw in picture form. People, the queues to get into all these restaurants are literally bustling like there's no tomorrow. You can't even move. I'm literally stuck on a traffic jam at the minute. I bought myself one of these uh, milkshakes that they have around here, which is like the proper, proper old school milk classic milkshakes. The milk's made from the Hokkaido's, from the, from the cows in the Hokkaido. Um, but yeah, you can't even fucking move in here. It's like, it's like a bloody cattle, bloody auction. Sheesh. Sheesh. That fucking strawberry drugs better and the freaking cantaloupe. The cantaloupe was 4200 yen. That tells you it must be really really good. Well literally it's just so fucking busy. Oh the knives. You guys know how much I love my knives. Oh some chuter up. Okay people, so I went into the CG Fish Market, I picked up a few things that I really wanted to try out again. Of course, you got to get that mochi, it's always the best thing to get in there, it's super delicate, it's super filling, it's beautiful as anything. There's that milkshake that I picked up randomly and I also picked up the different selections of strawberries. But the strawberries were quite expensive for what I found them for, but i got to taste them, you know what I mean? I love my strawberries, you know, I'm British. Most people in Britain, we're known for our strawberries, but Japan make them better. Now, I'm pretty much going to head back to my hotel now and I'm going to be picking up the uh, the UK pounds that I got there and then of course get it all exchanged. All's well, review this. Now, apologies if I didn't film as much as I was in that place, but bloody hell people, the place was freaking busy like there was no tomorrow. That was even busier than last time. It must be it must be because it must be proper proper market day today. Like Bowie Market. Because it was a Thursday. But shoes! Lots of stuff there, people. Lots of stuff. Um if you guys are into your course your um, seafood and cross stations and all that lot, yeah, 100 percent definitely worth your time. Especially you Beth. I know you like your your seafood and your shellfish. So yeah. But if you're into like your fruit and vegetables, if you want to like cook stuff, I wouldn't recommend cooking in your hotel room. <laughs> but if you like do get yourself like a flat or anything here and you want to live in Japan for like a month or so, that's the best place to get your, your uh, produce there. That place is absolutely amazing. It's amazing produce and you get literally everything you really need. So, without further ado, I want to go head back to my, uh, my um, hotel room and uh, let's review this food. I'll tell you what. This is a good spot to try and film and everything. Alright, so here in the night in the night is in bustling sun. So we have here the test out because it might as well before we, everything all goes fucking either lukewarm or anything like that. I'm trying to get a good freaking angle where the sun can get me at the same time. So we have here the Sharo milkshake that they were talking about. Um, 250 mils. Um, he told me to shake it because it's got a load of um, vanilla and all that lot in it. And it's made with all the national ingredients that you'd ever think for in a milkshake. So, of course, your eggs, your milk, your cream, etc. 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 He also said it was made with um, Hokkaido milk, which is absolutely bossing, to be honest, people, because Hokkaido milk is actually one of the um, 
best milk produces you can get here in Japan. I'm just trying to sort this out with you guys. Fucking hell, that's tough. Tough as nails, that. There we go. So, chin chin for you lot. God, it's like drinking actual liquid ice cream. Oh, sugar, that's nice. Sheesh, that's nice. Especially having this out in the hot sun. That's really, really good. And how much did I pay for this? I paid uh, 450 yen for this. So just under... Uh, just around about three pound odd, something like that. Ugh. Busted. Ugh. That's very good. Next up, ooh, do I have one now or do I have a strawberry? Let's go and have a strawberry together. So, these are quite fucking expensive people. I used a bit of my money raised just to get myself get my hands on these. So she said the most recommended to taste is the white ones because they're the ones that are were very sought after. That's why there's only three here, not not five of them. I'm gonna go for the smaller one there. So I'm gonna put that one over there. I'm gonna go ahead. God the smell. That's proper strawberry smells there. They tell you that they're definitely in season around here. But like I said, they, they grow these all year round. I don't know how on earth they do it, but they are flipping spot on. Unless they put little, little tiny protection things on it. So, here we go. Nice little strawberry. It's white. They call them, um, what are they called? I think they call them like, in, I think in translation it's like Jersey White. Or pearl white, it's one of the two. Itadakimas. Oh man. Oh man, oh man. That was amazing. That was just fantastic, perfect strawberry. Holy crap, that's good. Right. I think it's time to review my absolute main favourite thing of them all. The mochi. These are the best of the best of the best, these people. These are like hand grenades. Super delicate, super bouncy, super fluffy. These, these people are the fucking bomb. I'm gonna try the custard one because that's my absolute favorite. You guys know this. Let's uh, take the strawberry out. Oh, all that custard. Even the normal red ones. Super sweet, super juicy, not dry. Not like it's like in the UK. We get we we can definitely get strawberries all year round, but mainly we get them in, you know deported, imported I men, um, like from Spain or from Portugal. But when we get ours in, in in spring and summer, they're spot on. I am covered in white powder. It looks like I've just been doing cocaine for for months. But this is. Custard filled mochi. Best mochi ever, by far.
busted. Oh. I'm saving that for another later on. That was so nice for a treat. Oh. No, you know, you know what else that would go well with that mochi? A nice cup of cold green tea. Be super, super delectable. Apologies if you may not have seen all of that lot though, people, because the camera was moving on its own quite a few times. But yeah, that was the review for them type of um, items. Woo wee! That was nice. Now I can sit here and enjoy the view for a bit. See you guys in a bit. Well, hi there, man. What's up, people? Dobbs was right here. Yesterday was a bit of a short episode, wasn't it? Or oh, probably I might have compiled it into this episode. I've not decided yet. Not until I started it and everything. Anyhow, today it is the. It, today's Friday, my dudes. Ah! <laughs> Anyhow, today it is. What day is it today? What's the date? It is. Da, 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 the 17th. Yesterday. The announcement of the cherry blossoms was starting to bloom, so I researched everywhere and everything on where exactly the best place for me to really go without spending either too much time travelling or too much time walking or too much time doing anything else and guess where it is. It's literally near the zoo. Now. We went past there last time and not a lot of cherry blossoms were actually out yet but people have been reporting that they actually are starting to blossom now. So this morning I'm actually heading to Ikebukuru because there is an animate that has just opened. Um, it reop it's opened its new doors I think it was yesterday. And I didn't have a chance to really go on the opening day. And to be honest, I wouldn't want to go on the opening day because it's going to be freaking bustling with full of people and you probably won't be able to move. Um, and then after that, I'm going to be headed to that book off one more time. The one that I actually found, uh, that Nintendo DS for 1,500 yen, which was freaking amazing. And then after that... <sighs> Um, I'm going to try and find that Godiva in our Kibakuru because I do want to find them um, chocolate crisps still because they are so delectable and I really do want them when I'm coming back home. And then after that I'm heading straight to near the zoo to take pictures of that place and a lot of people say that you should stay there till really later one in the day. Relax, enjoy yourself, listen to some music, enjoy the cherry blossoms, just sit around, have a drink, not alcohol wise. Pretty much tap of a picnic or something, have something to enjoy yourself and just watch the cherry blossoms bloom all the way through the day. So, right now, I'm gonna go ahead, get fully dressed up again, and I'm gonna go get some, get some breakfast, well, as usual. And uh, I'll see you guys in Ikebukuru first because that's where we're gonna go to first. Because I just want to get it over and done with all the stuff that I want to get over there, and then we'll see the cherry blossoms. It looks like it's gonna be. Busting it down today. Hang on, camera's a bit weird. Bingo. Yeah, it looks like today it's gonna be a, a very much or an overcast place today. I'm here in Ikebukuru and a lot of the weather forecast it's supposed to rain around four o'clock. But I have a feeling it's gonna be a little bit earlier because. You can feel the rain. You can taste the rain. Wait till you get one big massive splodge and it will people screaming out. It's bitten! It's bitten! It's bitten! Everybody! <laughs> anyway, we're heading into Bookoff, which I would call is near HAM. But I might as well as I'm here though, even though I'm going for Godiva, Bookoff and the anime shop. The animated the animation one. 
I'm 100% certain I found a very obscure car shop around here, but I don't remember where. I remember it near being near a cat's cafe or something like that. I've got time anyhow, so I might as well see if I can find it. I was looking at that though, people. Clock Tower 1, the first video. Last thing though, I already got it on the P on the Super Famicom. Do I can't really need it again on the PS1? I don't think so. Anything that really catches my eye that would I really would really really want in my collection. The Final Fantasies, I've pretty much got all the Final Fantasies. Saga Frontier, we a not bad shout out, we're here. But I don't really need it. But like I said though, I pretty much am stocked up as it is of stuff that I wanna take home with me. There is one game I would really, 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 really would want, and that's Pepsi Man. But I know he's about 11,000 yen, and he's quite fucking expensive because, number one, he's fucking rare. That's the thing, he's rare. But I know exactly where that is. That's in Book Off in, um, that's in uh, Akihabara. So, I'll probably, if, um, if, I, if I cut my spending short, I may pick it up. But I don't see anything in here that really catches my eye on the PlayStation section. Maybe lucky to find something in here that might be really good. There, I know the loose cartridges, but you should be lucky to find something big. Well, most of the time it's gonna be either time we got your life or spelling bee and all that bullshit. Uh, tonic test. Not too bad. Some of your life games. Okay, my well, last bit of a flop this time. Uh, nothing was really there that caught my eye. There was no uh, documentals that I was missing, and there was no Kakuno Sukai's. Well, there was one, but it was disc two. I needed di all discs. I slowly didn't get them all. So now the next thing we're gonna go to now is we're gonna go to the Godiva, and then hopefully try and try and find some DVD stop shops around here. There's gotta be some others nearby. It's gotta be. But well, a lot of people may be thinking now he's desperate to get these documentals complete. Yeah, I mean, I'm desperate because I'm only missing two. So I think about it, if you guys are missing the last DVD of the whole collection, what would you do? Go order it online, don't pay even more money for it. Nah, you would want to go for it cheaper in the, in the actual country. And that's what I'm going to try and do. If I don't do it, I'll cut my losses and I'll just have to buy it online. But let's try and keep, keep, it, keep it going, people. Next up, let's get to Godiva. I may be lucky and I might find the actual car shop that I was looking for, but the motherfucker opens at 12. Fuck! So after scouring around, trying to look for that Godiva, I found the Godiva and it's literally just a standard pop-up shop. So pretty much it has all the normal chocolates that you'd actually have, but there was no the chocolate covered potato crisps. Still, at least I got two packets, that's the thing, and I still got an Eda Airball where they actually do have it and that's where I got them last time. So I could be fortunate and get them any help there. But also, also is that it? I found that. HMV. This could be a one-stop lifetime opportunity for me. They could have all the documentals, they could have all the Gakunosu guys, they could have everything. And once again though, it is a proper rental shop, you know, retail shop, so most likely it's gonna be at full whack. Full whack price, no reduce. All going to be brand new copies. But one thing about it though, it's not called HMV. It's called that. Uh, Esloa. Um, I looked on Google, double checked and everything. It's collabing with them, so it's like they've joined together. So it's like um, our ones with um, Game and um, Sports Direct, they're all put together because Game freaking are losing shit tons of money. It's the same thing with HMV. HMV is losing a lot of money all over the world. And that's why they're having like joint franchises with other, other, super, other stores. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and check it out. I bet your money you can't film in there. If you can, great. If not, bollocks. I'll just have to try and do some secret recording. So let's go inside, shall we? Well, that HMV was a quite different experience. Um, the two ladies there, thank thank God they super super helpful. I've never had people that helpful that for a while um, in HMV to be honest. <laughs> um, 
I found two Gakuno Sukais in there, but they were Blu-ray, but they were 11,000 yen each. That's over 60 quid for one DVD. What the fuck? Um, but yeah, I left them behind. I was asking about documentals. Um, they didn't have it at all in store, but they told me on how many there is of documentals. There is a grand total of nine documentals. Fuck. So, but you can get them either on DVD or for Blu-ray, so that's a good thing then. Even though I've got a lot of them on Blu-ray now, if I can get them on DVD, which are going to be cheaper, I'll be happy to get that. Um, but for the Gakuno Sukais, there's way over 30 of them, even more than that, because they do them every year. Um, she said that um, Hamada is planning on doing a retirement thing, so probably if Hamada does decide to retire, there'll be the no more Gakuno Sukais. That means there'll be, be the end of them. So either that they'll become either rare or they'll be, become cheap. But you can't get any of them at all in that store. You can order them online, you know, order them on their website, but it's a fucking expensive thing that is, people. Don't fuck that, people. If you guys have the money, go into HMV and order them brand new copies, but if not, just go to a book off or go anything like that and just get them cheaper that way. No wonder why HMV is shutting down a lot of shops all over the world. That is fucking expensive. Anyhow, with that being said, they were extremely helpful and that's one thing I'm happy with. Now, what are we going to do next? That squeaky fucking car, get that fucking MLT, mate. Um, next place I have to go to now, because we've been to Godiva, we've been to HMV, we've been book off. Still trying to look for other card shops and everything, but fuck, you know, get that cut off sorted, mate. I think it's time for us to go ahead and check out this anime shop. This one that just opened up yesterday. So, let's go and fast forward the travel, and let's try and get there soon as. So, I'm walking straight to the anime shop now. But I see far from in the distance, I don't know if you guys can picture it already, but I see a logo that we all know and love. Can you see it now? Oh yeah baby, I see Capcom. And you guys remember that good old story I told you about it a few years back? Where I met in, went into Walton's and I saw them two fellas that worked with um, Capcom. I asked them about Resident Evil. More likely Resident Evil 2 Remake and Resident Evil 3 Remake and they said, oh it's never gonna happen. Oh look, and they be told it, it did happen, didn't it? Probably because they didn't want them to tell me. Anyhow, let's go see about this Capcom. By the look of it, it looks like it's a, cr a game slash VRX um, Capcom Cafe. And as you guys know about me, I'm not very keen on cafes nowadays. But I, I, like I said, I'm very, I'm very, very picky. But I like seeing it though. That's cool. Here I am, people. I don't know what he's saying. What is he saying? I don't know. Anyhow. We're here. So pretty much it is busy as I what I saw last time. People were queuing up like there was no tomorrow. But it looks a little bit more quieter than I saw last time. So this time hopefully we've got ourselves a bit of a chance to get inside this time. And let's hope there's something good in there for me for my last few days here in Tokyo. And it looks like they're getting prepared for a festival here for the blossoms over here, because the blossoms are starting to bloom here bit by bit. It's slowly but surely, but like I said, for what I know, that the one near the zoos, they are already are blossoming. So, like I said, we'll be checking them out sooner rather than later, meaning today. So, what did I think about that anime shop? To me, not for me. Um, they had a bit of Yu Gi Oh in there, but nothing really that caught my fancy. I like the stuff I've already seen before. One thing that did drive me nuts though is that nothing was priced. Not a single thing was priced. And I was like, I picked up something that was like, it was Fire Emblem, the newest game that came out, but it was the CD slash Blu ray collector's edition. Not a single price anywhere on it. So it was like, I'm not going around all the time asking how much is this, how much is that. It was like, fuck that, it needs to have a price on it, no matter what. It was like, no wonder why people like, like they're even picking it up, checking it, and then they put it straight back because in one they have not haven't got a clue how much it is, but if they find out how much it is, they put it straight back. Um But mostly I understand why a lot a lot of girls are there today. It's because there's a lot a lot of signatures there of the all these famous um animeists, you know, slash um what you call it, uh Actors and actresses, that all size. Some of them you couldn't even take pictures of because probably stop people making forgeries out of them all. 
But the best thing about it though, they were just simping over all the male anime characters. I was like, oh, yeah, pretty much we'd do the same thing, guys, wouldn't we? <laughs> but um, I could tell you this though, I have not seen that much. Why is it so freaking dark? There we go. I have never seen so many girls literally almost wet the knickers over a, a male anime character. Wow. <laughs> But it's not just normal anime characters, it was gay anime. So it was literally two two guys make it out. Why? <laughs> if you want to see that in real life, just go to Canal Street. <laughs> you see that every freaking night. <laughs> but um yeah, it must be something over here though, they must love gay anime. It's something about it, it's it's awkward, it's a bit weird, but it's not weird though, like I said, I'm I've got flipping gay friends as it is. Jesus Christ, I got one one I got one gay mate that at least he sleeps with every single guy every night. Anyhow, I'm thinking on because what time is it now? It's around about 12 o'clock. I'm gonna head back to Kanda. Um I'm just gonna drop my bags and everything, and I'm just literally gonna go ahead straight to the zoo and you know, straight to the area where the zoo is and see if them blossoms are out there. If they are, fantastic. If not, mm, bit of a bummer. Which means I have to try and do it again another day because Days are running thin now, people. And to tell you truthfully, people, my God, my beard's been getting bigger and bigger by the days. I tell you, my beard grows quick. But anyhow, let's go ahead, get back to Kanda, drop my stuff off, and I'll, let's go see if the cherry blossoms are near the zoo. See you guys in a bit. Every turn I make, I always stumble upon another cherry blossom tree. I'm not even at the zoo part yet. I've just got myself back to where Akihara is because I just thought to get myself a bite to eat and probably go to the toilet. So, yeah. Every turn around I see now, I see a Sakura somewhere. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing more and more cherry blossoms now by the days we're getting closer to saying farewell to when we first landed. Holy shit, now this place is now opened. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Thirteen thousand, ten thousand, especially the old stuff. Okay, people. So that boost box, I was done about about to pay for it, but at the moment, nobody cannot go in unless you import a lotto. So pretty much, people who are pretty much the elites, um, of course. Gotta be a chapter D citizens to win the lottery, so that's the thing about it. Either way, that boost box is 10,800 yen. That is the cheapest I have ever seen it as a resale. Because, like I said, the only way to get them in the Pokemon Center is by winning them by lottery. But once again, you have the elitist with the app and all that bullshit. One thing for us, we don't have that type of shit. So, I was speaking to the guy, translate it all and everything. He said to me to come back around about 1900 hours. First come, first serve. He couldn't reserve it for me, even though he wished he would like me to do that. But he just said to me to be here before then. So I just put my alarm clock on to my phone, saying to pretty much say, uh, pretty much get yourself there before then. So I've got that there sorted. Now what I'm going to go to next to is to go into the Union Park, the one where the cherry blossom trees are, which we have promised you guys that we're going to get that done now. Today should be the day for it. Now first off, where what am I missing? My fucking headphones. I need to go back to the hotel to pick them up, but also I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a bag just so I can get some appliances as I walk there because as you, as you guys know, a lot of people may have picnics there because they enjoy the blossom trees. And I'm thinking I might try and do that and try and take some nice pictures as I walk around, drink and eat. So, I'll see you guys in a bit. Because I'll see you guys back in Akihabara because I need to go walk that way to get that hotel. We need to go that way. So, see you guys then. Well, I'm near the park now, people. Where the zoo is. This looks fucking promising. It definitely does look promising, people. I'm just gonna hope that it's all over, not just one spot. Mama Dobbs knows when the right days are, people. I wasn't gonna believe her, but she's actually told the truth again. She always tells the truth with me all the time when I'm on holiday. Because if you guys remember, that middle one was literally dead four days ago. And look at it now, it's fully bloomed. 
That must mean the others, they are bloomed. We're going to find out it very, very shortly. people is, is he proposing oh shit <laughs> they are sprouting they're all blossoming people some other plants haven't, but you could never say they have. Some areas are more blossomed than the others. But you'll see when you see the picture of logs. Bad day to you, do you think, people? Why is it fucking blurry? Come on, I'm blurry. It's not a bad day for um, birds to call, is it? 
yes, partially things are not fully bloomed yet, but we've got a lot of plants as we could have. I'll tell you what, some of the gauges, oh, not really gauges, really, but all the girls with the kimonos would look absolutely fantastic. Able to get a few pictures with some of them. But tell you the truth, still people, definitely. This month is probably not the right time for it. If you guys come here like a few days later, which I sadly can't, definitely worth a track to come down here and check it out. I bet there's other areas as well that actually have a lot more nicer blossoms. But like I said though, I've travelled all over the place and have seen some absolutely amazing ones. Sadly I missed the ones in Yokohama, but it doesn't really matter. But anyhow, as you guys know, it's Friday, Friday Night Funkin'. Um, so pretty much I'm gonna go ahead and get back to Ak Akiba get myself prepared to get that booster box and then I'm gonna get myself ready and I'm gonna speak to meet up with Ryan and start partying well, anyway it is St. Patrick's Day as well people <laughs> after long days of waiting and waiting and I've gone haggling and of course failing and missing out on so much shit I finally obtained the boost box I've been after since day one. The one that's been sold out in every single store. You cannot get it anywhere. Pokemon Center only gives them out as lotteries. And also I obtained the very first Scarlet and Violet promo card that ever got made. This is a great day. So, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Times are going by now, people. The, cl the clock is now ticking. Two full days left, people, because, well, your class is three full days, but the 20th is going to be half a day, and then most of the day will be sleeping because I have to wake up around about three, four o'clock in the morning to get myself a taxi to get to the airport, Hanida Airport, and get myself ready to go home on, at six o'clock in the morning. But today, we went, as you guys know, we went to the Socorro, beautiful as always, enjoyed it, it was fun. Did some prayers, took a lot of pictures of the, of the cherry blossoms and some of the girls there. Beautiful as anything. Girls, let me get your number. <laughs> but uh, like I said, people, I went to a store where you cannot go in unless you are an elitist or unless you wait for a specific day. I asked the person if I was able to wait until like near the end of the day and they said you can do, but it's a very, very small amount. But if it's queued up like crazy, it'd be only five people to go in, like as general general public. So I was like, right, I'll be here soon as. Okay, so I did. I went to the Sakura, I came right back, as I promised. The guy saw me, he knew exactly, he knew instantly I kept my promise. And then all of a sudden a lady, came straight to me saying, um, well, she recognised me, pretty much saying uh, somebody has not turned up or they forfeited their elite um, pass. So she gave me this paper. Uh, this pretty much tells me the rules and everything about the store that I had to go in. This was pretty much, this was evidence to, to you people that this was saying that I became an elite for a day. Um, I'm not an elite all day long because it was a uh, one-off. I uh, don't think this will ever happen ever, ever, ever again. But uh, let's read it. So, thank you for participating in the lottery of the living of the live pocket. So that's what it's called. Before opening, I will explain some today's rules. Rule number one. In store, time limit is 20 minutes. And customers who wish to purchase should line up at the cash register 10 minutes before leaving the store. So if you guys are literally not long enough and you've only got a few minutes left, fuck, that's it, you're out. No, no purchases for you. So it's very strict. Rule number two, you can check the condition up to 10 cards per person for five minutes. You will not be able to touch a single card that is over 10,000 yen. So pretty much between 60 to 80 pounds per card. <sighs> so some of you guys who are very, very touchy, if you touch them, you're fucked. Get out. And End and of story. You have to look with your virtual your eyes. Please put your card on the tray and check it out. Only cards over 50,000 yen, yen, 50, yen can be viewed at LED lights or desks. 
So there was cards in there that were worth over 50,000 yen. So literally hundreds upon hundreds of pounds. And there was a Charizard in there that was worth quite a few hundreds of quids. There was a Yu-Gi-Oh card that I own, if you guys know what it is. The God of All Gods, the one that you, um, if you sacrifice Oblis, Slifer and Ra together and you make that card and you win the whole game no matter what. That card now is worth a fortune. Uh, the, the, that, they were the cheapest ones that had it and it was still going for 900,000 yen. Oh shit. My car is fucking worth a lot of money. <laughs> and I bought mine for one about, oh, how much did I pay for mine? I paid for, I paid it for 42,000 yen back in the day, back in 2017. That's a lot of money, still. Uh, payment is cash only. So there was some people that I saw who were elitists and they found out that it was cash only. They freaked out because they only had card. So they had to run to an ATM to get money out. Once you get out, you cannot re-enter. So of course when you purchase and you leave the door and you see someone catch your eye, too bad, you have to start all over again. Please, but please enjoy the experience. And that is, is it. So there was also another rule that they, they, they pretty much told me. If it comes to booster boxes, it was one booster box per customer. Holy shit! But there was also there was also um, there was also uh, mystery cubes in there, but there were five thousand yen at least five thousand yen for a little cube. Now I did not want to risk that. As well as you guys know, I got loads of mystery cubes anyway, so I'm not too fussed. But there were some beautiful cards there. To be honest, people, there was quite a lot of cards, and I really did want to buy a lot of them, but I couldn't. I couldn't risk it. But anyhow. This is the black bag that has the treasure. We have got finally in our hands the crown jewel that we've been trying to hunt down all this trip. The V Star collection. This is the last product, if I recall, that got released for Sword and Shield. I mean, not Sword and Shield. Is it Sword and Shield? Is it Sword and Shield? I think it is, yeah, Sword and Shield, yeah. This is the last thing that came out for Sword and Shield. This is the last set that came out. Now, I really want to open this set with you guys. I know this is Crown Zenith in the United Kingdom, but the pull weights here are 10 times as better as Crown Zenith. But besides that though, they had a card there that I wanted. And that's the company, uh, Maggie. Now this card also comes with a thank you letter, arigato ganimas, for purchasing from the official shop. Like I said, this is also a pop-up shop, so this won't be here for long, it'll be gone in a couple of days. But this is the very, very first promo card coming out for Scarlet and Violet. Look at that beautiful card right there, ladies and gentlemen. That card is Phenomenal. So you have the three new starters, and of course you have Pikachu. Beautiful card. Now, of course, this was not the only purchases I got today, people. Um, I did get other things before then, um, before I went to see the Sakura. Um, it depends on it. It depends if I get demonetized. That's the thing. Uh, of course, in here. It is a load of um, solid cases, some crystal clear sleeves. It's just things that I need, to be honest, for when I play New Gear. So, and also keeping things in pristine condition and sealed away. But I bought three packs of special sleeves, and these have the Dark Magician Girl on it. Now, you guys know how much I love my Dark Magician Girls. She is one of the most popular characters of all time. These cost around about two thousand yen each, so they're quite expensive sleeves. But uh, yeah, um, so yeah, here's the first one. <clears throat> yeah, you you get my gist, can't you? Big titty bitch, big boobies there for damaged girl right like there in a bikini almost. Damaged girl in a lingerie. Yeah, you guys can start simping all over if you want, people. Go ahead, 
Use your imagination. <laughs> and oh mama, pretty much maybe in a maid outfit as well. But yeah, these are some special sleeves, people. Very special sleeves. <laughs> Going straight in the mystery box. <laughs> but I also bought some of these back in 2017 and I never, ever, ever, ever opened them. Because they pretty much artwork. That's all they are. They're in deviant art. And yeah, that's all I really purchased today. Oh, shit. I almost forgot. When I was leaving after the Socorro near the zoo today, I stumbled upon this little bakery um, called Bread Papa. Bread Papa's uh, Fresh Natural Cream Puffs. I bought two of these. Uh, one that's normal custard, then one that is cookies and cream. And I really want to try them out. So let's try them out. So this one looks like it's the cookies and cream one. So I'm going to put that one to the side because that one's going to be for last. And this one's the standard cream. So it looks nicely powdered sugared. Oh, it smells nice though. It's like a shoe bun, like a, like a shoe ring, okay? If you, don't, you guys don't know what a shoe bun or a shoe ring is, pretty much flour, water, mix it all up, bit of egg, bang it in the oven, do not open up the d door and it'll fluff all up. After you've done that, pierce it a little bit and let it dry out. And then you've got yourself a profiterole. That's what a shoe bun is, so. Mmm. Oh wow. That's nice. It's not as crispy as I expect it to be with the shoe bun or shoe ring. Profiterole. Profiteroles they mainly are crispy. Mmm. Mmm 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 mmm. Mmm. Past me be screaming at me saying. I want jam! I want jam! Because remember people, back in 2017, I was a big boy. Oh, damn boy, he's thick! But the mouth, now this is the thing though, it's like thanks to a lot of people who believed in me, my family, my friends, Beth, Lou, literally everybody out there who believed in me that I can lose weight, tone my muscle as much as I can, but still look the same. Thanks to you guys, I can still enjoy my stuff like this, but also maintaining the weight now. Mmm. That was really, really good. For some reason, you guys like watching me eat. Probably because you guys want me to do a mukbang in the near future. I don't want to do a mukbang in the future. This is as close as a mukbang that you would get. <laughs> but anyhow. What am I doing else tonight? Tonight I'm going to go back out for a few drinks with Ryan, with Brian Ryan, um, and probably with Uncle if he wants to come out. Oh. We'll be going back to the Nigerian bar where we were playing darts and possibly we'll probably stay there all night. If we do move, there is another bar that where you play beer pong, probably that's the only other area that we probably will only go because I don't want to go to that um, the girls bar because that was fucking dog shit. Talk about fucking waste of time and a waste of money. Mm. 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 Oh, she does. That's really nice. Now, this is the new flavour that they are advertising. <laughs> They're saying that this is the number one flavour now. Cookies and cream. Now, it's hard to do, it's hard to beat custard flavour. But cookies and cream is a banging flavour. They weren't wrong. Holy shit. Punch of cookies and cream. Mmm. Mmm. Look at that. Mm. Can you please fucking focus on the food? Thank you. Oh, nice and gooey. Look at that. Mm. Yeah, I could definitely agree on what they were saying that this is their number one. 
Mmm. Biscuity. Pretty much Oreo taste because it's cookies and cream. Mmm. Very good. Would recommend getting these people. Um, what are they called again? Um, bread Papas. Would definitely recommend going and check them out, people. They definitely are really good shoe buns and shoe rings. Or profiteroles, whatever you want to call them. But there was another flavour that they had, but it was strawberries and cream. And you guys know me, I'm not massive keen when it comes to strawberries and cream. Strawberries and ice cream, different story. But when it comes to normal cream, not keen on it. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mmm, that's good. What is left in here that I did not have a chance? Oh shit, I forgot to, I forgot about these. Um, my strawberries. I was supposed to eat them when I was at the um, near the shrine. I also picked up another Gakunosukai DVD. I picked up number eight as well, and uh, Mega Man X3 on the Game Boy Advance. They were just random pickups. And we have my strawberries. The final two strawberries of the day, and the final two strawberries of the trip. The Pearl Whites. And when I was speaking to Mama Dobbs, she was telling me that uh, England are actually trying to get a hold of these. And for some reason, they keep selling out. Wonder why. <laughs> um, but I tell you, Trevor, though, you won't get anything better than this, people. Please fucking focus on the food. Thank you. Mm, 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 mm. Beautiful as always. Oh. Mm. Mm. Yummy. And the final one. Strawberry number two is going to be gone. And that's another thing with the people. I love my strawberries with sugar. You don't need sugar with them. Definitely don't need sugar. Anyhow. That is all we got today, people. If we'll be recording more later on, don't you guys? I will try and record as much as I can when I'm out clubbing. With that being said, the people want to go see you guys subscribing. I'm going for a bath slash shower. And I'm going to watch a bit of Uber Asanova before I go out. Cheerio!